Here's your two bits. Now go to hell. Hello, I'm Ottawa actor Peter Peening. I would love to show you a documentary about the making of hairy knuckles and the pearl necklace. Cut. Action! Sister, street fighter, you can kick her, but you can't beat her. You're good, she's better. Peter! You make me wet, but she makes me wetter. Here she comes, Emma, I was wondering if I could ask you a few questions. Thank you, may have another. Thank you, may have another. Thank you, may have another. What was your favorite scene? The scene where Phil gets to play with the fish nunchucks. You really enjoyed that one, did you? I did. Why? There's a lot of guts. That's the thing. Tell us a little about your character. Where did you find the attitude to play Gale Force? I'm naturally a very mean-spirited person. That can't possibly be. Really? Thank you. May I have another? What's your favorite swear word? Bastard. Thank you, Emma. Thank you for your time. How's your head feeling, Peter? Okay, it's okay, yeah. Okay. Good work, that's a wrap. You're a true. Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> Ah, well, thank you, Ian, uh, for lying beside me here. My uh, pleasure, Peter, and then some. Oh, boy. Do you have an explanation for this screenplay? Not not a good one, Peter. A I, bad one will suffice. Well, I, I tell you, we, we, we wrote a first draft of this, or I did, and uh, then our production schedule stretched out for, I don't know, good 11, 12 months, something like that. And all along the way, new ideas kept cropping up, so I, uh, I shoehorned them into the script the best I could. This is my headline. Rewrites <laughs> continue. What's it mean, Ian? What's <laughs> it, it means, mean? It means that every week I rewrite scenes for this movie. <laughs> so as a screenwriter, of course, you're not really the final authority then. I mean, you, by, by the nature of the production, you are... Um, accepting uh, on-the-spot uh, innovation than by others. Is that, do I understand you correctly? I would say you do. You do understand me correctly. Tell us a little bit about playing the unknown gas station attendant. That was quite a challenge for me. You know, I, I had appeared in uh, Jesus Christ Vampire Hunter, and uh, I think my acting job was almost universally panned. So I decided that if I was ever to appear on film again, I should have a paper bag over my head. So I think that's a goal that we accomplished with the character of the unknown gas station attendant. The voice, uh, the voice was a bit of a challenge. It kind of uh, changes partway through the film, if you notice, because partway through I finally figured out that uh, he really should be a kind of a Jackie Mason kind of a character, a Borscht Belt mm -hmm. comic sort of a character, so uh, if I had figured that out on the first day that we were shooting with that character, things would have been wonderful, but uh, I didn't. It took me a while. Tell us about killing your star character. It was, uh, it was difficult. I, uh, I went on a bender after, uh, after we shot those scenes of killing off uh, Harry. It was uh, a little difficult for me to deal with, see the character die. Uh, 
But, uh, you know, I think we kind of pull the audience back at the end by mm -hmm. having uh, Fuzzy Knuckles come along and uh, uh, assume the mantle of Harry. So we've killed off the character, but somehow we've given back to the audience. So. What's your favorite swear word? I like rat bastard. Now that, that shows character. That's, yeah. uh, it, I also <laughs> like uh, shit heel. Okay. Here we are, Graham Collins Music Studio. Graham, there's a lot of score in this film. How did you approach writing so much music? Uh, I decided to go for uh, what basically amounts to a, an all sort of retro 80s kind of sounding score with a little bit of a twist. The idea was that since the, uh, since the original film was shot on 16, it, it sort of had that, that look to it of, of being shot about 20 years ago. So I. I wanted to sort of complete the picture and, and make it seem like uh, it not only looked, but sounded like it was shot 20 years ago. So I was really hoping that when people looked at it, they would be able to, you know, really question, you know, was this made in 2004 or 1984? Talk about working with collaborators on the stage in the film, in particular, uh, running on Awesome. The song um, was originally uh, sort of conceived between Ian Driscoll and myself. He came up with uh, some original lyric ideas, which I sort of jostled around into song form. And then once the music was recorded, uh, we went in to uh, uh, record the vocals for that, where we got uh, Matt Lynette uh, to sing that song. What's your favorite swear word? Uh, smegma. Smegma? Smegma. Thank you. What are we looking for, Nancy? We're looking for a dress for Cassie to wear for um, the mugging scene and the catfight scene. Are we going to find it here? We have pretty high hopes that this is the place. It was intimidating, I have to admit. Uh, I wasn't sure what to expect. What I found was a lot of gentleness. Yes, exactly. Uh, I may retire from acting unless there's another Harry Nichols movie.
I feel like I've expressed uh, everything that I wanted to as an artist. Motherfucker. Yes. Josh, can you tell us a little about the characters you play in the film? I play a Bigfoot. I play a Motley Crewer. Isn't there one more? Uh, oh, wrestler. wrestler. Yes, you're the wrestler. Play, you're the bride. Uh, yeah. Well, what's the bride's name again? Oh, play. Plager. Yes. Could you explain the challenges of building and acting in the Bigfoot costume? Well, the stilts. The stilts were really hard. That took a bit of practice in the backyard just to walk. Uh, I used to work door for this goth night, um, Tuesday nights at Zayfog Evil Rocks. I got these stilts from a guy with a goth mullet. So then um, I learned to walk, and then I slowly learned to run while we got into the forest. And uh, it was very hot. It was during the summer. I had hockey shorts on underneath, padded hockey shorts, foam all around my body, uh, hockey shoulder pads, the mask, the wig, foam around my arms, the fur on top of the foam, and as you guys all know, I, I sweat a little bit. So then uh, I'd lose around 10 to 15 pounds. We had aquarium tubing going into jugs of water that you guys would feed me, so I'd constantly be drinking. It's really hard, it's really hard. Ore por el santo, vacant of the wrestling ring. When santo is near, the banditos they have fear. They're afraid of that santo, hero of the Mexican people. Chica clientes. Oh, yes, he has plenty. Well, Jeff, uh, this was the house where Santos uh, was filmed. Uh, what do you think about uh, having your place used, uh, the film location for uh, the pearl necklace? So I guess that's part of me that I lend to Santos or vice versa. It's hard to believe that Santos would live in a small one-bedroom apartment, eh? This marks the third time you've played Santo. Do you feel like you're being typecast? What else does Jeff Moffat have to offer the world? Um... Besides wearing a mask? I don't know, that's a good question. <laughs> uh, you had to play some more emotional scenes in this film. Seeing your best friend die, being betrayed on your wedding day, being gerbled. How did you approach those scenes? Uh, as for uh, uh, um, being betrayed on my wedding day, well, that's nothing new. <laughs> as for uh, seeing my best friend die, um, well, I can't say that I've been down that road. Well, not legally anyway. Um, and as for being gerbil, well, approaching that, I usually get back up. Uh, how do you train for the wrestling scenes? Um, it's, it was simple, a uh, vigorous, uh, high-protein diet, uh, daily exercise three times a day, and then I let somebody else do it. What's your favorite swear word? Petunia. 
Petunia. I don't know, it just popped into my head. It's more of a word association thing than really a swear word. Well, uh, Santos, or should I call you Jeff, thank you very much for a wonderful interview. It's been a pleasure talking to you. It was great. You. Thanks for dropping by. Some line shouldn't be crossed <laughs> in the name of independent cinema. It was crossed about six or seven shots ago. <laughs> but the point is, he's chosen to drink genuine alcoholic beverage to get into his uh, role. Well, some actors would, would say, uh, I want to be totally sober because because then I'm in control of my acting. Sometimes to act drunk, you know, you need to be sober to act drunk. So he's an actor in trouble, we have to help him. Phil, no, I said passion. Well, Phil, uh, I'm really grateful for this because I know you're a busy man, uh, wants to keep you occupied, and really my questions, I'm sure, pale by comparison to others you'll receive from uh, entertainment tonight, perhaps. First of all, Peter, I would really like to thank you for having me here today with all my friends at your estate. Uh, the pool's nice, the barbecue's been fantastic, uh, you have nice lady friends. How did you feel about killing off Harry? Oh, good. Where do you find inspiration? Uh, like I told you a hundred times, cantifles, cantifles, cantifles. Okay. Elaborate a bit. Um, tell us a little more, perhaps. I like cantifles. What's your favorite scene, acting-wise, in the film? My favorite scene, Peter, uh, was running. I like the, the running parts. Phil, are you a collector? I mean, collecting anything, perhaps like pine cones, you know, as opposed to stamps or coins, which most normal people seem to, to find. Gosh, well. I'll just leave you hanging on that one. What's your favorite breakfast? Porridge with wheat jerk. What's your favorite swear word? I don't know, you know, I don't really swear that much. Oh, yes. No, well, Sometimes I'll say something like, darn! Well, it's truly remarkable. Thank you again, Phil. I've cut all my films on this machine. Harry Knuckles in 1998, Harry Knuckles and the Treasure of the Aztec Mummy in 1999, Jesus Christ Vampire Hunter in 2001, and now Harry Knuckles and the Pearl Necklace in the year 2004. I love cutting on film. It's, uh, I say film forever. There's nothing like cutting, uh, cutting film on the steam back on a flatbed. But only if you can out drink me! Yeah! Bring it on! Bring it on! Sir, stop! Sir, stop! And I look at your hat came off your head. <laughs> I'm here in front of the Dominion Tavern uh, uh, with Lee Gordon DeMar, who directed me in a small role in Harry Knuckles uh, in, in the Pearl Necklace. And I have some questions for Mr. DeMar. Lee, the first cut of Harry Knuckles, uh, the Pearl Necklace, was nearly three hours long. How did you decide what to cut out of this great masterpiece? That was hard. I always find it so hard, Peter, to to cut scenes in an, in, a, in an independent film. Instead of cutting scenes, we decided to cut the scenes that already existed shorter. 
we started Harry Knuckles and the Pearl Necklace because we were, we were, uh, we just finished Jesus Christ Vampire Hunter, and we're sort of waiting for this Black Kissinger film to happen in Jamaica. And we started doing Harry Knuckles as sort of a, for fun, sort of, a, and it just sort of expanded, and there's so many ideas, and it became this monster movie, a two-hour movie. But you're right, there was 50 minutes cut out of the movie, and it, and it wasn't whole scenes, more or less. It was mainly just making each scene smaller. The scene uh, where Santo has sex with uh, with Cassie was a lot longer in the original version. The funeral scene, which was right. a lot longer when Harry Nichols is dead at the movie, uh, was much longer. Those are shorter scenes now. And that's how we got around it. What made you decide to kill Harry off? I thought it would be funny. I thought, originally, I thought it would be funny to kill him off just so part five could open mm -hmm. up with him in a shower. Oh, yeah. And he wakes up in a shower like he was just asleep. And, and he realizes yeah. part, that Pearl Necklace is all a dream. <laughs> that was the original idea. Kill him. People were like, what? You killed off your lead? And then we'd have opening in part five. He's in a shower and it was all a dream. SM nuns, wrestlers getting gerbled, radioactive pearl necklaces. Where do you get these ideas from anyway? Oh, it comes from brainstorming at Josh's house. Josh Grace <laughs> invites us over and we talk dirty and some of the dirty talk gets funny and I sort of think, you know, that could be cinematic. I mean, you know, you try to put on screen what people hasn't, haven't seen before and you try to also put on screen stuff that, you know, that'll give someone, the, you know, something to talk about. People might not remember exactly what happens in Harry Knuckles and the Pearl Necklace from beginning to end 10 years from now. What they will remember is that Santa gets gerbled and then, and, and that Harry Knuckles punches a nun in her crotch. Those are the things that are going to stick with an audience and those are the things that inspire me. What was the high point of, uh, of the production, in your estimation? <laughs> Coming to the Dominion after a long day shoot and feeling really good about what you did. That you had fun and that it was a sort of a, you know, in a creative way, a successful day. Mm -hmm. The high point is right there, coming here with the people you shot your movie with and having good feelings about what you just did. Yes, yeah. yes. I'm good. Well, what's next for you now? Well, we're right now we're in production on a short film called Bzzz. Buzz it, don't say it. Bzzz. It's about killer bees in Ottawa. The nation's capital gets infested by killer bees. And I think it's going to be really, really strong. And then in November, we're going to go to Jamaica and make a film called Black Kissinger. Sort of a uh, love letter to the black exploitation films made in the 70s. What's your favorite swear word? Ass. I love ass. Mine ass. too. You Mine too. That's yes. your favorite swear word? Ass. Ass. Ooh. Okay, let's go drink.